Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Ford. Uh, it's a very beautiful morning. I think the uh, people of southeastern Michigan are, are owed a couple beautiful mornings. Um, we uh, are very happy that uh, with a large crowd here. And before we get started with our presentation today, um, we have Michael Cummings from the Detroit Area Book and Author Society, uh, a very recent friend of the Henry Ford, and he's going to deliver a few appropriate remarks uh, before we get started. So may I introduce Michael Cummings? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Brian, for having us here today and everybody else at the Henry Ford. Uh, I serve as president of the Metro Detroit Book and Author Society, and I can tell you when we learned about coming out here for all these events this summer, the group was extremely excited. Um, for those of you who don't know about the Metro Detroit Book and Author Society, we were formed in 1972, so we've been around for about 40 years now. The main function of the group was to bring authors to the city, the Metro Detroit area, for lunches, uh, press conferences, and to promote the sale of their books, as well as introduce them to the book lovers of the city. Currently, we are the uh, largest one-day book event in the country. We host two luncheons in the year. Uh, we just wrapped up the spring luncheon this past Monday. We had about 1,200 people come in for that. We also host again in the fall. Today, our board for the society is made up of many area groups that are concerned with literacy, library programming, and the love of books. Uh, those uh, members are include, but it's not limited to, the Henry Ford, Madonna University, the Library Network, and the Oakland Literacy Council. Uh, to date, we've given out thousands of dollars in grants to area organizations and libraries to provide educational opportunities for area students through four separate awards we offer each year. As I said earlier, we just wrapped our 78th luncheon during the past week. This fall, we'll be hosting the 39th. Next spring, it'll be our 40th luncheon, which I anticipate we'll try to make a big deal out of, being it'll be our 80th luncheon, 40th year anniversary. And just again, just want to thank everybody for coming out today, having included us with the event. And we look forward to seeing everybody throughout the summer at the Henry Ford, especially during the Literacy Days events. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, before we get started, please silence any of your cell phones or pagers. And we will have question and answer period immediately following. I believe everybody has note cards, and you can write your question on the note card and then pass them to the center aisle, and we'll pick them up and, and answer those questions afterwards. Um, the Henry Ford is filled with a lot of treasures and objects to inspire our guests, young, old, and everybody in between. With us today, we have a, a living treasure here who has shared his passion and knowledge of history with thousands of, of students, um, both young and old. Uh, a few weeks back, I attended a Civil War roundtable lecture in which our speaker spoke. And at the conclusion of the presentation, our speaker brought up this 10-year-old, 11-year-old boy to the front and introduced him as the next great Civil War historian. He probably could not see his face because his back was to the young child, but he was beaming from ear to ear. And that's the type of inspiration that our, our speaker has bestowed upon hundreds of young students. I personally have been blessed to be the recipient of some of this inspiration. As a young 11-year-old boy with parents that were very supportive of my interest in history, especially Civil War, they brought me to a Civil War collector's show. It was mostly geared to adults who had the means and capacity to not only engage on intellectual conversations, but the capacity and means to purchase some of the, the items. And as I walked around, uh, an eager young boy, most of the people on the other side of the tables were looking at me like, make sure you don't touch those objects. I walked up to Mr. Finney's table and with googly eyes, and I heard, well, hello there, young fellow. And he engaged in a conversation with me, and 
it was it was very rewarding and very enlightening something that was a, a touchstone in my life and my parents proceeded to explained to him that I was trying to convert my bedroom into a Civil War museum, <laughs> which I had. And Mr. Finney said, well, let me be your first uh, contributor to your museum. And he gave me my first two Civil War bullets that I still have today. Sorry, I'm not going to pass them around. They're, they, <laughs> they mean too much to me, and I don't, I don't want to lose them. Um, and then in subsequent weeks, I received reproduction copies of photographs and other things to, that he donated to the museum in my bedroom. And whenever relatives came over, they were coerced to, to go through the Civil War Museum. So it's, it's a great pleasure and honor today to have him back to deliver our first lecture in a, in a series of three that we have. Mr. Finney, as I refer to him, uh, United States Army veteran, 37-year um, award-winning educator. Um, he has taught at North Farmington High School uh, where he chaired many many committees, committees and, and led uh, many of their, their efforts um, with the history field in Civil War. Um, a adjunct professor of Civil War and 20th century American history at Oakland Community College and University of Detroit Mercy in Detroit. American history teacher emeritus 2006 He's a very sought-after speaker on both the, the state and national levels. Um, he's been an on-camera historian for several National Park Service documentaries. So it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce David D. Finney, our speaker today. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. I had actually forgotten some of those things that Brian mentioned. I want my bullets back. Um, I've started to run out of them. Um, I have a, uh, when I was first contacted by the Henry Ford to come down here and present this, uh, this presentation today, I said, oh, that's great. Some years ago, uh, maybe decades ago, I wrote a, uh, an academic paper that I said would probably fulfill the requirements uh, that you've uh, requested. And then a very close and dear friend of mine, Judy, would you stand up for a moment? Judy said, David, you don't want to stand up there and read an academic paper. People are very visual. They like to see, they like to see items on the screen. And uh, she said, you need a PowerPoint. And I said, well, I'm not a PowerPoint guy. I can't do that, but she can. So I, I introduce her to you, Judy McIntosh. Stand up again, Judy. <laughs> what, uh, what you're going to experience today on the screen is her work at the computer. Uh, she has put together a number of PowerPoints for me over the last two, three, four years. All of them, I think, are exceptional. Uh, and they make my job a lot easier. I have the fun of providing the information and the research. She gets to put it together as the technologist, uh, the techie, and then I have the fun of also presenting it. So, Judy, thanks a lot. Thank you. When we think of the American Civil War and the question that is pertinent for us today, why does the Civil War matter, I think of the Civil War as a living legacy. I see it as providing us with the ties that bind us with the past. And it provides us with the lessons for the present as well as the future. I often think of the greatest president that the United States has ever had, Abraham Lincoln. More books have been written on Abraham Lincoln than any president in our history, and on his administration, and certainly on the Civil War. More than 85,000 volumes have been published just on the Civil War. 